You can hold that. Youngins are really starting to get on my damn nerves. He's a purveyor of nonsense. Your fault. He's a Georgia high school coaching job influencer. His favorite Bible verse is Jesus wept. He's the man of constant sorrow, Chris Lamb. Welcome to episode 16 of Sun Coaches Podcast. We're still at the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic here in Orlando, and I am joined right now by an Orlando legend, Doug Gabriel. How's it going? I I just I don't know how I keep backing into these things where I get to hang out with guys that were legends at their high school, legends at the University of Central Florida, played in the league. I mean – I, I've I've never been around this these many people before. I really don't know what to say. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate you being on with us, and I can't wait for you to share with with the guys. You know, just some things that that you've seen and heard, and stories you have, and just you know things that you uh, do now. You know, coaching and giving back. I appreciate it, and it's it's an honor to sit here and and talk football. That's something that. We was all raised on, and we loved doing it. So my thing is, I can sit here and tell you a whole lot of stories. So you go from from Doctor Phillips. Did did you just play football? Everybody we've talked to so far today, they it, it, they have a common thing that they they played everything. We we that we have no other choice but to play all the sports. Um, so we started. Out, I started out with basketball and just football, and then I did track. You know, I wanted to play baseball, but for some reason that ball scared. <laughs> crap out of me well what would you do in track were you a runner or i was 100 forward? 200 four by one and i did four by four then i did long jump and then you left there and went to central florida i left there and went to university of miami oh, okay and there was a year we got put on probation to where they took all the scholarships away so after that i left and went to mississippi gulf coast community college and i was there for a year and then went to ucf Okay, so then you were able to. That was before. That was way before transfer portal. Yes, yeah, sir. So. <laughs> yeah, it was because it was just what that was the only option you had. So, but you were allowed to. Uh, I mean, you could do that back then. Back then, yes, yeah. So yeah. It wasn't a problem. Yeah, that was our our way of saying our transfer portal back then. So, what are you best? What you got college story wise? Anything oh, man, that stands it's, out? It's to a point to where, you know, just when I was at UCF, we had. I think we had some crazy guys on our team. And UCF, everybody sat there and was saying UCF was always standing for you can't finish. <laughs> so it was like that, and it was like we call it like a melting pot to where guys who played ball and stuff like that, when they either you know got in trouble, left school or something, they always end up at UCF. I mean, did you know – I mean, because most guys you talk to, you know, because I'm, I'm a high school coach. I've been doing it for – Almost well, I've been doing it for thirty years, and most guys you talk to that, that play at y'all's level, the guys that make it, it's like, oh, I always knew I wanted to play in the NFL, or I always knew. I mean, you dream about it, but you know, some guys are just that. Generally, when they make it, they're like, oh yeah, I knew I was gonna. I mean, that's what I was gonna do. Well, my my mom always knew I was. That's what she wanted me to do, um, and that was a good thing because I got real close with my mom and my family by playing football. So I felt like, you know what, that was a way of we all communicate and stuff like that. And so I started when I was five, six years old. And How many brothers and sisters do you I got have? three brothers. Are you the baby? The I am the baby. The oh, you're the baby. I'm the baby. Oh, I bet that made things. That made it crazy because my older brother, he's, uh, <laughs> he's two years older than me, and it was always trying to, compared and it was just never it was always i wanted to be like my big brother well, that's pretty cool i'm i'm the oldest so i don't I, i've i've always been interested in what that perspective is when you're the youngest yeah yeah because it's i mean just different it got to a point where people wanted to make it like a competition or you guys this who's gonna do this and that for me it was never like that right you know, because i looked up to my big brother right you know he played on a, one you know on the big teams you know i was coming up on him and then it was just a point to where, because I was fast and stuff like that, and they, I played up most of the time. So. Right. Well, when you're good, that happens. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah. 
you finish it at UCF and you get an opportunity. Who was the first team you got to play for? I got drafted by the Raiders. And to this day, I love them for giving me the opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, just the whole ordeal of being there and being a part of them for my first four years was awesome. You know, and, you know, I ended up getting traded to the Patriots to where it was real crazy getting going from there to the Patriots because – we feel, I felt like the Raiders was a organization to where it was like built on a lot of legends and stuff like that. And not only that, my first two years I played with uh, Jerry Rice and Tim Brown. Just to have them two being my mentor and guiding me through my first year was awesome. So what was it like from a weather standpoint going from the, the Raiders to Boston? Well, that's the crazy part. Or did part. you care? I Northern mean, California was cold. Right. People don't know that. Northern California is cold. Like, once that sun go down, yeah, he's blowing. Then early morning was 40 degrees. You know, but it went, when you, like you say, when we got up there uh, up in Foxborough, yeah, it was a little different to where you got snow higher than 10 feet that they pushed off the field and stuff like that. It was like, ooh. And being, being from Orlando, Being, being like, a Florida boy, it was like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> being a Florida boy, yeah. like, is this normal? Yeah, I couldn't imagine. I I don't. I've got my wife's people are from upstate New York, and we like snow for about a day. Yeah, and like then, I don't mind visiting. I don't yeah, want to live there or yeah, play. Yeah, it's it insane. Was, it was different because like the kids now, when they get forty, fifty degrees, they like coach. It's too cold. Yeah, uh, I was like, what do you mean? This this is good. This is good playing weather right here. Well, what did where did what happened after the Patriots? Like, how long did you when play I for the Patriots? Was the Patriots for a year, then I got sent back to the Raiders. Okay. So when I got back to the Raiders, and it was awesome because before I left the Raiders, Randy came in. And for me, having a guy like that, him and Jerry Porter just was like, man, I got an opportunity because then I, you know, I knew I can play and stuff like that. But Randy name was near any name, and JP just got, you know, just signed his uh, new deal and stuff. Like, I'm like, yeah, they're going to get all attention, and guess who's going to get the ball? So I got an opportunity to showcase my talent. So that was awesome. But I went back to – the Raiders and Randy got sent to New England. So, when you're playing college ball and you're an elite level talent like you were, do you recognize other guys out there? And you're thinking, all right, I'm gonna see these guys again. We're all gonna just meet back up and we're gonna play again. I mean, does that ever cross your mind? Or are you just thinking about you getting there? No, um, I took it upon myself because it was more so like I was a little more introverted. You know, lack of communication and stuff like that because I was I was a mama's boy, I was always with mama and stuff like that. But football, I got to get a whole band of brothers and knowing playing from them from little league all the way up to where, you know, I still communicate with a whole lot of them. I I knew I was gonna build a bond with these guys, even though if we competing with each other, I know it was gonna be a bond that we was gonna build. So it was it was awesome to see some of the guys and see what they was doing, you know, and just to be a fan. Right, because again, you know, we all play this game, but also we tend to forget that we still are part of this game, but we also are a fan of this game too. So don't lose that because you lose the excitement. Because now, when you take it upon that, we start thinking business. Right. So you finish playing your, you know, your career. You finish that part of your career, and what did you decide after that that you wanted to do? When I decided after that, uh, we did. Then that's when I went to Cincinnati. I broke my wrist, and then. Got that injury stuff, and then the UFL came about. We I did that, and because of the Raiders had kind of my contract, so I was the crazy part about it. I was probably the first person ever to get traded in UFL. Really, I was went from the Orlando Tuskers to the California Redwoods, literally like a week before we had our game. That's that's. That's a little history right there. <laughs> and it was crazy because something. it's like, man, I'm like, man, it's like I finally get to play here just like I was playing when I was in college. Right. My family be there and see me, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, the Raiders, this and that, you might have an opportunity to go back to them. They want you to get back in playing shape, so we got to see you back. Well, how much different are those leagues like you play in NFL, you go – I mean, is the, I mean, I know they're – I get the – competition and all that but as far as the business side of it are they comparable or is it totally different i mean you said you got traded the week before the the, the business size i mean it's still business 
You know, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. You know they're going to still make business decisions and stuff like that. Um, it just be different. It's by, by basically the same. Because when I got traded from the Raiders to New England, we was getting ready to play Seattle on our last preseason game. And I'm getting ready. Like, um, we're only going to play, like, a, a series. And we're going to be done and stuff like that. And Fred Blitikoff came and told me, hey, you can't play today. I was like, yeah, you – you probably done crapped your pants. I'm playing today. <laughs> He's like, no, you're not going to play today. Sit down. Let's talk. When I sat down, he said, the reason why you're not going to play today, you can look up at the screen. And it came across the screen. That's when I found out I got uh, traded. So I had to go back in the locker room, put on the warm-ups, and, yeah, get back, watch everybody else play, enjoy yourself, have fun, get back on the plane. Your boys, your guys. Yeah, my guys, your, my your brothers. Your family, your brothers. And, you know, it was hurtful, didn't say anything, and – them coming up to you and it was like, man, that's that's BS. Yeah, I mean, you know? there ain't nothing you can say. I there mean, ain't nothing you can say because once we got back, literally flew back into Oakland, the car service was there. I had to go from Oakland to San Francisco and catch a red eye. And I had to be there for a physical, and I had to leave my physical to go to meetings. So it happens just like that. But fortunately, though, you were able to go back. I mean, that's I guess you look at it that way. Yeah, you, you can look at it that way, but it just – the heartbreaking right. of you knew then you knew it was business. I started knowing it was business when I see two of my guys I was raised up watching and I played with get like traded and let go. That was like, wow, you got two Hall of Famer guys, you know, you could let them finish their season out. And it was just yeah, that's when I was like, Yeah, I gotta get my I gotta get my <laughs> my business mind on right now because it became business. And when I got to New England the love of the game, I almost lost the love of the game because of getting, like, you got kicked out of your family house. Right. And so I started doing community service, and that's why I started my foundation and stuff like that because it was just more so I had to find my love again. And well, talk to us a little bit about your foundation. And so my foundation was. started because my son has sickle cell, and I wanted to figure out how can I help the parents and the family that don't have money to provide for their kids the service. So we started raising more money, and then we partnered with the Morris Clinic. And, you know, I met with some families, and the thing is, the story they gave us, with me and my brothers and them, it was like, hey, it was a family. They made a mama try to make a decision. She had two twins. They only had one transport vehicles. She had to make a choice to either let which one go. And the mom, she, you know, God, God, God was right by our side to where she got both of them to the hospital. And that was hard to hear. So we, you know, we asked the question, how much was how much a vehicle going to cost? They said three hundred thousand dollars. We helped raise money, and then by raising money, that money is supposed to be allocated for it. And then we go back and say, hey, did you guys get the vehicle and stuff like that? Yeah, business hit to where we couldn't tell them where what they can do with the donation, even though it was allocated for that. So I was like, you know what? From here on out, I'm going to call families and stuff like that. I'm going to give it straight to the family and not to a hospital. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and we, that's awesome. And we've been doing it ever since. And since then, we've built up on a whole lot to where, you know, we got a men up program, mentor program to where we have young men and young women, you know, just understand the difference when you go get an opportunity to go to college. So we give them that experience and stuff. We do college tours. Well, do you have a website visit. or anything people can it's, go visit? Uh, DJ85Foundation.com. Okay. So I know my son right now, he's revamping it. So it's down, and he's revamping and stuff like that because my son's into all that technology stuff. So, yeah, and we've been doing it for now 20 years now. That's awesome. Yeah. One thing about it, we <laughs> – me personally, I don't like to be, you know, part of – I'm part of it, but I don't like that attention to where – because right. it's not about me, it's about these kids. Right. Well, that's pretty interesting to see, you know – that kind of way of giving back and like, what are you doing now? I mean, I know you're coaching a little um, same bit. Same thing. We do mentor. And so I just got an opportunity to become the head coach at Wakaba High School. So that gave me an opportunity to still give back to my community, but also try to help these young men understand about this game we call football. It's not just about football. You know, we, we can go on and on about how, you know, they're seeing the kids on the transfer portal. They're seeing the kids and this and that, but they don't understand about, you know, you got to have some loyalty in this game, and I don't think it's any more there. And so that's one of the things we sit and talk to the kids for the last – I've been there for almost three weeks now, and just talking to the kids and kids who was trying to leave, want to leave, and we talked to them, and, you know, you know, we told them just, you know, 
give us the opportunity, show you what we can do, and show you and teach you this game we call football. Because again, it's only it's ninety percent mental, ten percent physical. So if we can, if I can help them understand that and show them that I'm a hundred percent in with them, they are, they should provide the same thing with me. Well, that's what I was going to ask. You know, now that you've gotten back into high school coaching, and I know you've said you've only been there for three weeks, but you know. Obviously, they're they're not going to be like we were. They, you can't coach them like like I was coached, like you were coached. Um, they're not like we were, and you know they may share some similar, you know, life experiences, but they're different. It, they're different. Yes. Yeah. They. But they're like, what's the different. biggest thing you notice? This. Oh, uh, just just the fact that they're some kids not lower. Um, they they want to be like cradled so much it's like you have to sit here and give up your morals in order for a kid to stay in your program i my thing is i'm I, like i'm a transparent person so i'm not going to sell a kid anything i'm not a car salesman all i can do is help you and be a part of your growth process right and that's what i can promise you i, I can do mm-hmm. but promising you scholarships and this and that, I don't have that power. No right. coach got yeah. that power. So yeah. when coaches tell kids that, they're lying to you. Yeah, that's funny. They don't I've have al- that power. I've always told kids, you know, whether – it didn't matter which sport I was coaching. I'm like, look, man, I can control that you play here. Yeah. I have no control what happens to you after this. I mean, if another coach offers you or wants you, that's only I, – I can put you out there. No. You know, I can put you in the best opportunity to get that opportunity. Yeah. But I don't make that decision. Yeah. You know, and, and people that tell them, like you said, they're just selling tickets. I can't do yeah, that. And, and Coach Moore was on earlier today, and he was saying that one of the biggest biggest things he's seen a difference in them is their their concept of what is actual reality and and the amount of effort that they're willing to put in to meet that reality. Yeah. That they're not, that, they're not willing to give difference. it. They're not willing to give it what, what we was raised up on giving. Right. Like we knew we had to make a sacrifice in some things. Kids now are not making that sacrifice. And that's the reason why, you know, I talk to a lot of people and be like, I don't think I could do college. You know, it's hard to do high school because you're still dealing with certain things. Right. You know, you got to be like the hottest bidder. But my thing is, I'm not going to – once that happened, that coach promised you certain things and that don't happen, now what you tell that kid. Right. You know what I mean? How do you sleep at night knowing that you promised that kid power five schools and that kid didn't get power five schools? Now all of a sudden – you got D2 schools. Not saying D2 schools is bad, right. but you promise them this. So they already telling people this and that, and then they don't get it. Now all of a sudden they go through this whole process of now mentally they messed up. Yeah, you've created a narrative of there's no truth. That's, so they can't take you at your word. And now they don't now don't trust nobody. Right. Now they go through their whole adult life not trusting. Because you was part of their, you know, their youth as they coming up and then all of a sudden you just like, they trust coaches. Right. You know, again, and we, should we, we're in a, we're in a game right now. We won't have a job if these kids that need like instructions. They didn't need guidance. We wouldn't have that. Coaches don't want to coach no more. Coaches just want to sell wolf tickets. That's what I call it. I just, I'm not willing to do it. I mean, I'm willing to give you 110% coach you, help you learn this game, help you understand the knowledge I got. Because again, I tell kids all the time, it's never a dumb question. We ask questions because we want to know the answer. Ask these questions. You feel some type of way, hey, let's sit down. Let's try to figure it out together. Well, it sounds like you're talking about developing young men. Yes, sir. Yes. Not, not just football players, but yeah. teaching them how to be a man. And I've been, like I said, I've been doing that for 20 years. And, 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 and we need a lot thing. more of that. You know, and that's why we, you know, like we got a lot of guys, because I'm here in Central Florida, we got a whole lot of guys that we talk all the time, and we all have that same vision to where that's what we want to do to develop young men, but you got other ones are not doing it because now they, they think about the right now. Us developing young men, we're thinking about the later, what they're going to achieve later. What right. if what if that doesn't happen? Big picture. The bigger picture than anything in the world. Well, that was something, you know, we were talking before we came on, and we were all, I mean, not all of us, but, you know, playing and telling stories, carrying on about some of the things kids do, and, and you were like, all right, well, what's the answer? <laughs> you know? That that's fine. Yeah, you, we, how how do we right. fix it? We're doing, how do we do all something? Right, that's all good, well and good. But what's the what's the solution? Because we we don't know. We, it. we can sit around here and talk about. Yeah, we all got a story about how crazy some of these jokers are and what they do. But we got to come up with some solutions because yeah. they going they next yeah. they next up. Yeah. And and I don't want them. I, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. I don't want them looking back and feeling like 
I didn't provide them with opportunity. You know, hmm. that, that I shortchanged them, that I didn't put them in the best position to be successful. You know, at the end of the day, we want to be able to look at them and go, hey, I, I gave you all I had. All I had. And, you know, it was on you. This. And I don't know that that own you mentality is what we've got to get them to understand that, and it's okay yeah. for them to fail. It's it's okay that's for them to fall down. That's what they're supposed to do. That's if, if, how you as, learn. As a parent, <laughs> as a father, that's what you want to happen. Like I want my son to have little scuffs here and there because you know what he's gonna learn. You know, like you said, we were just talking earlier. That's what we needed. We needed. Hey, well, I can't keep doing that because I'm not gonna let you keep hitting me inside my head and not try to figure <laughs> out how to stop it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you play football at the highest level. I am certain that every day you went to practice or worked out or whatever. I mean, all the guys that are sitting in this room right now played at the highest level in their respective sports, and I am sure that everybody sitting in here didn't – you didn't show up every day and just – you were the best? No, no, no. And every day or every game or every week or even every season that you walked out there, you were the best at your position? You had to – or you wouldn't have kept going. Why yeah. bother? I'm the yeah. best. And I was willing to work because, like you say, we all sitting here. We knew for a fact we can win every battle. At the end of the day, we're going to lose. But what's going to help us when we lose? Are we going to sit up and just lay down and take it? Or are we going to get back up and figure it out and then come back the next time and try again? All right? Kids don't want to do that no more. They always want to win. I always tell people all the time that we're coaching kids these days that – that um, and there's nothing – you know – I. I like video games, too. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't mind playing a game here and there, but they have grown up in a whole society where it's a reset button. If something doesn't go their way, they can just hit reset and they can start over and play. Life ain't got no cheat codes. We don't get a reset button. I'm telling you, I you, wish we you can. Got to, yeah, no, yeah, I got some days I'd like to go back Ooh, and do boy, over I'm telling quick. you, we all think we get about 20 more years back. Boy, we're, <laughs> what we know now, the knowledge we got now, <laughs> yeah. we'll all be all world. But – they, they didn't got no reset button. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. hard to get them to understand. You know, we show them better, we can tell them. And I, and I think it's hard sometimes for us to get them to understand that, baby, we went down a dirt road here and there. We want you to stay on nice, smooth pavement. And we want you to have yeah. it. We want you to have it better than we did. But you're going to have to, you know, we understand you're going gonna to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. It's okay. Yeah. And I, I don't know why we've created a, a universe where they're scared to fail. You know, and I understand. Like, I ask people all the time, why do you think our elders are smarter than us? Right? And when people say, they don't know why, well, I can tell you why. You know, they live longer. <laughs> so they mean they experience more than we do. Not because of whatever. They live longer. So they've Math been problem. through more to us. So at the end of the day, yes, they have more experience than us. Like for us, we sit here and we trying to get uh, these kids our knowledge. The only reason why we got knowledge is because we lived through a lot. Like these kids try to tell us so many stories. I can tell you every story a kid done told me, I can tell them I've done that. So try another lie. Give me something else. <laughs> at the end of the day, oh, this teacher said this. You sure that teacher said that? Come on. Yeah. You know, again, that's what I'm saying. Like these kids don't understand like – we're not saying stuff just to say it. We lived it. Right. So us living it, so we're trying to make sure you guys don't make them same mistakes all the time. You're going to make a mistake. Right. And so, it's okay. And it's okay. We but want you to make some mistakes. Please do. Uh, the um, uh, Staley, she from South Carolina, she sat there and said, I want you to fail. And that's a great analogy when she said that. Because at the end of the day, if you fail, you learn. Well, if they don't fail, what do they need us for? They, they, they don't. I mean. They don't. If they know everything and they can do everything, then what what are we out there we for? We out of job. I we, can tell you that. We're wasting our time. <laughs> we could be doing what we want to be doing. Yeah, because they won't need no more teachers or something. Because at the end of the day, why do we got, we, you, need some, you need a teacher to help you learn certain things and to guide us. They need guidance. Well, when you talked about the, the you know, our elders experiencing more, you know, now that, you know, becoming an older coach now, and, and, and I'm not saying you're older, but you're more experienced than a lot of the guys in the profession now, definitely from a playing standpoint, you know, you look at some of these guys and you're like, well, I've seen this before. This is a, this is this blitz or this is that play or this is this route combination. And they can dress it up and name it and color it, whatever they want to. It's still the same. And some of these guys just haven't seen it. And you're like, oh, that's just – and they make fun of older guys and they're yeah. like, oh, you just are trying to – no, baby, I've seen this before. Uh, so and so ran this 15 years. Y'all didn't just invent it. You can't reinvent the wheel. 
<laughs> you can't reinvent the wheel. We've seen, we all we all got our license. We know how to drive cars. We have seen cars went from so small to so big, but guess what? It's still going doing the same exact thing. <laughs> That's true. Right? It, it ain't changing. You, you're probably adding a little wrinkle here, ain't gonna wrinkle that. It's still the same plate. It's still the same car. It's still the same tire. Whatever tire you put, it's still the same tire. Have you seen a square tire? Not one that'll go nowhere. It, so at the end of the day, so you, tell me what else is you doing different? You're right. What else are you doing different? Like they said and say, we all going electric, right? But that was already been done before. But guess what? He did, he's got people to buy into that, right? At the end of the day, that's just what it is. Whatever they selling, they're just trying to buy into it. Like we've seen all these offenses come around now. It's like, man, such a rant. That, and back in the 90s, yeah, you know, I done seen Houston Oilers run a certain type of offense. And Coach, stuff. I it's saw like, something the other day on Twitter. Somebody, I can't remember where it was, they got in the gun wishbone. They called it gun wishbone, and they ran double dive out of wishbone. And they were like, look at this. And I'm like, that's 44 daylight. That's, that's sec- all it is. That's, sec- that's 44 daylight. That's second <laughs> that's back through. It. That's second back through. That's the H play. Whatever you want to call it, That's that that is that ain't nothing new. All y'all did was got in the gun – Got in the wishbone in the gun, and you ran forty four daylight, <laughs> or whatever, whatever you wanted to call it. Whatever you call, you call it, it, mon- you call it monkey nuts. It don't matter what you call it. It's the same play <laughs> it is. That, that Barry Switzer and them ran in the eighties at Oklahoma. Man, you know it ain't it ain't changing. Just like you know, but we got- we're gonna hear people in the next two days. I mean, some of these little young, they're gonna stand up there and act like they know better. Oh they yeah, know like like we you sit and say wildcat, right? We seen Wildcat a long time ago. All oh, it's Wildcat now because when what's Notre name Dame got there, when they got there in uh, <laughs> Miami, we doing Wildcat. Well, we seen Wildcat. Yeah, we were seen that a long time ago. It's still the same. Now the single wings coming back in high school. Yeah, yeah. It, the Notre Dame box never seen that before. <laughs> so it let's go day. now. Yeah, them them old black and white videos when uh, white youngins and black children didn't play together. When they listen. you know them days, they yeah. did, let's go now. And you watching them guys. Oh yeah, never seen that offense before. Oh, it's making somebody I'm just came up. Soon they're gonna they gonna go back to the I formation. Then once you see the I formation, I'm like hey, you ain't never see this formation. Stop it. Yeah, we've seen the I formation. Well, so, like in like, the pros, it's come. You know, or what? Michigan, Michigan comes back this year, and they're like, oh look, they're they're you know they got a wing and a tight end and a wing. Like, oh imagine that. Man, that works. <laughs> you know, single back <laughs> wing stuff. Oh, they're playing smash mouth foot. Yeah, I guess so because they. Everybody spent so much time spreading it's everybody spread, out, spread. playing seven on seven. Hey, here's the idea. Why don't we put 11 in the box? <laughs> and then let's play ball. <laughs> let's see how that works and out. And that's how it is. And that's why I say now. This like, is funny. Like even, you know, like I tell people, we just, I was telling some of the coaches the other day, I said, we watch basketball now. All the, all the three-point shooters are seven feet. When do they go in the boxing again? They don't, they don't, go, they don't go in the post no uh-uh, more. No. And don't, don't, even, don't even try to argue with one of these younger cats about – you know, Jordan and LeBron and this and that. And, and I, you know, I get it. It's different errors and all that stuff. That's fine. But, guys, they clear out the box. They get a one-on-one matchup, and everybody else just stands around, or they kick it out, and somebody shoots a three. They ain't got five people down there in the paint pounding on your head. They get paid million dollars to be a spectator, too. Yep. Because I'm sitting – I know for a fact. I, I'm not running up in the court. If, if, football, if a basketball was like basketball when we was playing, I can't do it. But I promise you, I tell my kids, now, I can play basketball now. Oh yeah, I don't I know. Go. Y'all gonna y'all gonna kick it to that wing? He gonna do something and shoot? Yeah, fifty year, at fifty years old, I think I could play the game I now. I know I can do it. I know you ain't got to do it. I ain't got to worry about nobody hitting my body or none of that. No, Lord, listen, I'm listen. I could have made it in the NBA <laughs> if that was the case. Cause now, because guess what? I'm averaging me about twenty rebounds. Cause nobody else don't want to do it. <laughs> Honey, hush. What you talking about? <laughs> and that's how it is. It's just it's the game is changing, and we it understand has. it. But my thing is. It's always going to revert back to where it started from. Yep. Just like football, we just like we just talked about. It's going to literally revert back to how we seen football and how we get these kids to understand yeah. and communicate with them and get them to do what yeah. we need to and take the lessons from it and use football to get to where they want to get to or yeah. whatever. Because it's going to use them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've told y'all since. Well, I mean, not y'all, but, you know, I've told kids that went on and played, they're going to use you. Use them. You get that to. degree. Get that money. Get whatever it is yeah, you I'm want. Because when you get done, when they get done with you, they ain't worried. They'll just roll you out the way and bring another one and in. Just on like to it. the next. Not bad eyelash. <laughs> on to the next. Because it ain't nothing it personal. It's just 
What is it? Hey, it's just it's business. business. Like I said, we all we all know what the NFL stands for. We know what that stands for. Not for long. At the end of the day, it's saying not for long in the back of their mind, what have you done for me lately? Well, Coach, I sure have appreciated you being on here today, and I hope you're going to be working with these high school kids a whole lot longer than for long. And I hope it's going to be a whole lot more than just lately because they need – we need – Men like you in our profession. We need people like you helping these kids. And and our profession needs more people that don't just care about the game but doing right and doing right by these kids. I sure do appreciate you being on today. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir.